Hi guys, it's Joe at PC Repairs 101 and today I've got an Asus X550C laptop we're going to strip down, I'm going to completely strip it down um, so yeah, this is the video on how to do that from the uh, screen to the motherboard, everything, we're doing it all Cool, so uh, what I think I'll begin with um, is the uh, motherboard um, this particular laptop has got a faulty mainboard on it. Don't judge me, I've already removed the screen. Um, obviously, when I show the removal, it'll be, uh, I'll show it as if the screen was in it. So, it's got a bit of foam just to stop the lid from getting scratched. Flip it over. You want to get a precision screwdriver set. I would recommend this one. This was the previous one I used. Um, I've just bought another set because the other one of uh, the magnetism's kind of gone on it. These ones aren't even magnetized, so don't buy this screwdriver set. I'll post in a link below if you need a screwdriver set on a good magnetic one to get. Um, the fact that they're magnetized makes a whole lot of difference when you're removing the screws. Um, it's an absolute bloody nightmare to do it without them. So cool. Uh, what we want to do first is remove the battery. So you've got a little bit there and a little clip there so you want to slide that across slide that across just pull it out nice and simple put that to the side cool so we'll start with this cover here let me zoom in a little zoom in just so you can see yeah so we start with this cover here so you've got a screw there and a screw there very simple we'll just unscrew that and unscrew that so make sure you keep all the screws uh, aside um, in the right order as all the screws will have different thicknesses. So to take this off, it's quite simple. Oh, just slides down. The slides down, pulls off, happy days. Then we'll have the RAM here. In theory we'd have the RAM because this is just for parts. I've stripped all of the RAM and the hard drive um, already. So pretty much just taking any parts which are really worth any money out of it. Um, so now we've just got the shell, but yours of course will have the RAM here and the hard drive here. So what we want to start off is just taking the RAM out, um, taking the hard drive out. So you've got a screw there, screw there, screw there. You might have a screw there. I don't know if you would, but I don't anymore. So take that one out. One, two, three. Again, all the screw sizes are different, so just make sure you take note of what screw goes where. Slide that out and put it up, and you'll obviously have your hard drive in this. Take out the hard drive, it's very simple, you just take out the screws. And you just pop your hard drive out and put that to the side. Cool, so now what we want to do is we want to take out all the screws on the bottom of this. So we've got a screw there, screw there, screw there, screw there. Uh, we've got a screw there, screw there, screw there, screw there, screw there. And that's all it we've got it seems. So start in the corner. I think that screws just, so basically on newer laptops, of course, just like everything nowadays, they're not made as good as, uh, Old laptops, um, the little kind of thread inserts with a little metal thread screws into the plastic base, um, they can snap off. Not necessarily means you've done anything wrong, you could do it as gently as you can, but because the plastic on newer laptops nowadays is just not as good as it was before, um, they can just snap, is what it is. Uh, usually there's more than enough screws in a laptop, so it doesn't necessarily matter too much if one of them does that. Um, so basically when you just unscrew it, you'll unscrew it and it just doesn't come out like that one. Cool, I'll fast forward the video just to get rid of the other screws out. Actually, do you know what? No, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna keep it raw. I'll keep it a raw video. It's so frustrating how these screwdrivers do not have magnets on them. Obviously your ones will, and if they don't, go buy some. I'll put the link in the description, because you'll have to do what I'll, I'm just about to do in a second. Flip it upside down, and the screws go everywhere. 
But usually if they go on the floor, they've gone to the other side of the room, or to Narnia, or God knows where. Murphy's Lauren Place. Cool, there we go. So that's all done. So now what you want to do, or what we'll both do, is flip it over. And we just want to separate the palm rest from the base. So you do that, just get your fingers under the palm rest, just slide your fingers around. Or if you want, you can use a tool. I don't know where my little tool is, unfortunately. I think it's called a spudger, I can't remember. I don't know where my tool is. I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver for this now instead. Let's get that on my tool set. So I'm just going to follow this around. Cool. So I followed it all around. Now we can go to take it off. So watch out because the, um, let me see if I can get a better angle. The wires will be attached if you can see. So we want to carefully take them out before taking the full uh, palm rest off. So you've got the keyboard one. Keyboard one is the large one that just flicks up and then you can pull it out. You've got two smaller ones which again Flick them up, flick the little hinges up on the connectors and pull the cables out. So once you've taken out these three, um, these three cables are actually the power button. I'll show you. How. So you've got the keyboard, keyboard ribbon, you've got the part, uh, trackpad ribbon and you've also got the power button ribbon. And they are attached to there, there and there. I'll zoom in. So all you do is you just little zoom with little focus, sorry. So you just flick that up and then you can pull out the cable. Cool. You can see, no wonder this board's failed. It's got some nasty bits of corrosion on it. Probably liquid damage, this one. Get all sorts of customers dropping all sorts on their laptops. Uh, a lot of them, most of the time, are repairable. Unfortunately, some of them aren't. So now we've taken off, taking the palm rest off. Put that to the side. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the DVD drive. Take out the DVD drive. You can see we've got a screw there. So let's just take that out, and then you can just pull out the DVD drive. Cool. So we've removed that. Now I'm going to take out the Wi-Fi card. Uh, so we've got the Wi-Fi card, so let me zoom in. So Wi-Fi card. Pull the cables out. Take the screw out. There we go, and then we'll just put the Wi-Fi card to the side. Now, what shall I take out? Um, so, might as well just take out the full board. So let's take the board out. So take the board out. Um, you might have screws in different places. It depends on IT. I don't know. I may have taken this board out previously and not put all the screws back in. But from what I can see, usually the screws where you need to put them, this is a good little tip. So you can see this. Can you see that little arrow there? This little white arrow. Most laptops, uh, motherboards have this same sort of idea. Basically, where these little arrows are is where you put the screws on the main board. Uh, when you put the main board back directly in it, so that's a good way of telling. But let's have we got a screw here, screw here, screw here, screw here, uh, and that's it. That's all it looks like. So take them out. So one, come on, let's swap over to a small. Oh no, that is coming out. Yeah, one, two, three. And four. But there we go. So they're now out. And then what we'll have is we've got the DVD um, DVD drive. That's a weird DVD drive. We've got the CPU fan here. Um, that will also have a screw here and a screw here. 
uh, where the warranty seal is. Um, if you're going to dismantle it and it's still in warranty, well, tough luck, you've ruined the warranty. But if you've got enough faith in repairing it yourself, then it should uh, be pretty simple. Um, but just bear in mind that that will void your warranty if you did have any left. Usually check on the manufacturer's website, uh, just type in your seal number and it'll tell you if it's in warranty or not. So now that's that, we'll pull that out. So we've got a few cables to uninstall or unplug. We've got the power cable here. Let's pull it out. We've got the speakers. Yep, there are the speakers here. So we'll just very carefully pull them out. Give them a little wiggle. Best not to pull too hard because you could pull one of the little um, wires out of the actual, like, the, the end tip, which is not what you want to do. So just carefully pull that one out. Um, so now we've done that. Happy days. So I think what we'll do now is we'll just take off the uh, CPU. Cool, so to take off the CPU, this is great to know if you uh, need to, for example, replace the thermal paste if it's overheating. Um, good way to check if it's overheating, use Core Temp and an app called Heavy Load as well. Run them both together, they'll give you the temperatures. I'll post a link in the description below on how to do that. But let's just show you here. So we want to unplug the um, speaker cable here. Speaker cable, really, I'm getting all confused. CPU fan cable. We just want to pull that off. We'll pull that up. We don't want to put it off. We want to take it off. Put it off. And then you've got a screw here, screw here, screw here. That's for the GPU. Or the C either one of these is the GPU and the CPU. One there, one there, one there, one there. So we're just going to unscrew them. So if you do want to, um, of course, give it a clean out if it is overheating um, and you need to apply the thermal paste, I would highly, highly recommend using uh, Arctic Silver 5 uh, cooling paste, or thermal paste. That's the one that I use. That's, in my opinion, some of the best out there. I'll post a link in the description below. It's a bit more expensive than your cheaper thermal paste, but then again, this is something that's going to be in your computer, cooling your computer for months to years for the sake of an extra fiver, an extra tenner, do it. It will make a lot of difference um, and bring the longevity of your computer hugely. So if you do need to replace it, you just get a couple of alcohol wipes, uh, wipe that off, wipe that off, wipe that off, wipe that off, put a little, little dollop, about half a pea size, maybe even a quarter of a pea size, just on your processors, and then screw it back on. Another way that uh, fans overheat, or laptops overheat, there is a thick layer of dust stuck in these fans. So I'll just quickly show you how to take the fan off. Um, if I can see myself. Looks like this. Um, I think it literally just comes off. So we just take the sticker off. There we go. We're just peeling that sticker off. There you can already see the dust. So Hopefully we've got a lot of dust and I can show you. No, we haven't really. Basically, in some cases, there is a huge thick layer of dust here where it's just collected over time. That can cause large amounts of overheating. Um, that can, because basically there's nowhere for the air to go. So yeah, that's a huge reason. Um, and then just use the uh, thermal paste is just the extra. So let's just pop that back on. And I'll just put that to the side because I no longer need that. But if you want to put it back on, you just do the opposite of what we did. Just put the screws back on. Cool, so we've removed the motherboard now. So now we've removed the motherboard. Uh, all we've got left now, pretty much, is the lid. Um, so I'll start... Well, actually, let's take the speakers out first. So to take the speakers out first... Oh, actually, so doesn't look like I've plugged in back in the cable since this was last taken to pieces so on yours you will have the screen cable plugged in here just like this so basically just make sure you unplug the screen cable as well before you take out the motherboard that would be pretty obvious when you go to do it I'm sure you realise it way before I've showed you that so, take the speakers out, Let's just take this cable off, follow that round, that is the screen cable, put that to the side. 
<coughs> and then we'll do the same with the uh, antenna cables for the Wi-Fi. Let's unpeel them. Take them out of their places. Cool. So to take the um, speakers out, it doesn't look like there's any screws. I don't have any screws. They might just be stuck in. It might just be stuck in with a bit of tape, maybe. Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay, cool. So the speakers are stuck in with double-sided tape. So I'm being very careful to lift these as to not damage them. Yeah, if you can just see. There we go, so we've got the tape on the back. So be very careful not to damage. This is all very delicate, especially obviously speakers that create a acoustic sound. So I'm just carefully pulling it up, not too hard, and just I can just hear the tape giving. Because you do not want to snap your speakers. This is if you, for example, want to just replace the speakers for whatever reason they've blown or whatever. Otherwise, you won't need to do this. Just be very careful. Alternatively, if you've got a heat gun or a hairdryer, let's put a heat gun or a hairdryer on there. There we go, that just came off nice. Um, and that will just loosen up the tack on the back. Cool, so now we've done that, what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you the example of the screw that we couldn't get out on the base. Um, so this screw I couldn't get out. This is what I mean. Can you see there? So that was supposed to being the plastic, so that there is supposed to be that is supposed to be here, but because I'll come on zoom, uh, but because all plastic now on laptops is pretty crap, it just snaps. So as you can see that it's snapped where that's supposed to be. Uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to get just get some pliers, hold it in place, unscrew it below, and then I'll just get a little bit of epoxy and just dip it back into that hole. So we've got it back in there. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do personally, but it doesn't necessarily matter too much as there's so many other screws used in that top. So what I'll do now is we'll take off the we'll take off the hinges. So we'll take the hinges off um, in order to uh, get the screen off. So you've got one hinge, you've got one screw, two screw, three screw. Again, I hope you're keeping your screws separate as there are lots of different sizes. I'm just going to give a screwdriver that I dropped on the floor. So I'm mixing between two Phillips screwdrivers, uh, a thicker one and a thinner one. Um, you should, in a precision screwdriver set, get all different types. I just want to fill one, just gives me a bit more grip to get it out. So we've done them, and then again, we're going to go to the other side. So the other side, we've got one, two, three, and again, we'll do it on this side. So one, two. Remember the uh, laptop. Uh, screen will probably fall forward, especially if it's got the weight of a screen in it. So just bear that to note. I would just hold it, hold it with your hand, just to make sure that it doesn't fall back, fall off the table, crack the screen, or whatever. Cool. We can now just lift that off. Except for I can't lift off this side because I've got that thread in there. So I'm just gonna. Hold that little bit of thread, rather than use these pliers, I'll probably don't know yet. Just hold it, and I can just unscrew the bottom screw now. So let's quickly do that. Yours hopefully won't have any of these threads snapped off, but like I said, cheap plastic nowadays on laptops, it tends to happen more often than that, than it ever has. Cool, so now we've got that off. Happy days. So the last thing I'll do on the motherboard is now take the socket out. So we've got the power socket now. So that was underneath the hinge. So if you ever need to replace the socket on this laptop, uh, you just take off the left hinge, put it up, and you can just replace the socket. 
of anything on laptops, uh, the most likely things that are going to fail on them, obviously screens, RAM, hard drives, etc. But sockets are always prone to failure, mainly through physical damage. Um, of course, if you're putting your socket, if you're plugging your socket in, in and out every day, it's going to eventually get damaged there, or if you're unlucky. So we've taken that off. Cool, cool. So now I've just got the base here. We've just got the base. I'll put that to the side. And then we've got the screen. So obviously I don't have a screen in this one. I've already taken it out. But imagine you do have a screen in it. So what we want to do first is we've got a screw here. And we've got a screw here. These screws are under two covers. So these screws are under two little covers that look like these. So what you want to do is get a flathead screwdriver. You want to just carefully push them out around the sides just to lift them off. Uh, it looks like I've already removed the screws on these but uh, I don't really need to show you. I'll just be careful you put these to the side, they're a bugger to find if you drop them on the floor etc. They'll stick to anything and they'll lose their tack very easily. Um, but in theory you'll have a screw here and then you'll have a screw the other side so We'll just pretend to unscrew them, unscrew, unscrew, happy days, so they're unscrewed. Now what you want to do, you want to separate the screen bezel from the lid. So to do that, we just follow that around. Happy days like that. And we've removed the screen bezel. So on yours, of course, you'll have a screen. So to remove the screen, what you want to do is you want to loosen up this screw here. You want to loosen up this screw here. And then there's two screws on the side on the bottom, you want to loosen them up, up as well. So basically what this will do, is this will enable you to um, kind of push the hinges forward, give you enough room to get at the uh, screens. Well actually I think on these ones, I think the screen, yeah, okay, so I'll take that back. On these ones you have a screw here, screw here, and probably a couple of screws at the bottom to get the screen off. Uh, so just unscrew them, should be able to pull the screws, screw, uh, screen off. Alternatively, there's sometimes a screw on the hinges, but it doesn't, this one won't be. So you just take them off, and then you just want to carefully just unplug at the bottom the ribbon cable. Happy days. I'm going to take off this ribbon cable as well as the camera. So to do that, I'm just going to carefully peel off this camera. Again, it's done with double-sided tape or some sort of tack, be very careful, uh, camera boards or web cameras are extremely fragile, extremely, extremely, so I'm just going to put that to the side, now I'm just going to take off the hinges, so take off the hinges, screw there, two screws at the bottom, two silver screws, of course if you were to replace the screen you wouldn't need to take off any of the um, base, any of that, you just literally do what I said, except for on the screen wise, um, just from there. So, yeah, just literally take off the, um, just take off the those two screws, screen bezel off, uh, those four screws, put it forward, unplug the ribbon cable, put the other one back in, just do the opposite to put it back together, and then you replace the screen. Just make sure if you do replace the screen, it is very, very important to remove the battery first. Cool, so I'm just going to take off the hinges. So just take off the hinges, give them a little wibble about, there's one, and then there's two. Cool, there we go. I'm going to leave the antenna on the actual laptop itself, um, because uh, there's not really any need to take that off, so I'm just going to take that down. Cool, there we go. Happy days. Cool guys, I'm just going to quickly show you how to uh, remove the um, trackpad from the uh, palm rest. So you can't remove the keyboard, the keyboard is almost kind of uh, riveted in, but with plastic rivets, but you can remove the palm rest. This is great if the palm rest fails or you get liquid in it, and it you know, and it fails for that reason. <coughs> Sorry, for, or for whatever reason really. So to do that, I'm going to take off these plastic protectors. I'm assuming these plastic protectors are just help 
protecting regarding liquid damage. I'm just going to pull this ribbon cable forward, things like that. So, we've got three screws here, we've got one screw, two screw, three screw. So I'm just going to unscrew these with a screwdriver that allows me to unscrew them. There we go, so one, two, three, and then it's very simple, go underneath, push it up, once it's pushed up we can then pull it, there we go, there's the track pad which we can replace if needed, and the track pad cable. Cool guys, so there we have the uh, full disassembly of the Asus X550C laptop. Um, if you've got any questions, just let me know um, and I'll just answer them in the uh, comments below. Alternatively, if you need any links to the specific parts and where to get them from, again, I'll post in the uh, description below or the comments below um, on where to get those specific parts. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down, but just tell me why. Of course, I can improve next time. Just remember to subscribe for similar sort of videos like this. I'll do disassemblies and all sorts. So yeah, thanks.